Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 20 Liverpool career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for the support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of today's episode, we're quickly going to look at the games that lie ahead. Now today's episode is going to be an exciting one because we have three games in the Premier League. The last episode, uh, Getting Wild at Wembley, I do believe I named it. We didn't have many Premier League games. We had Brighton in the final of the Carabao Cup at Wembley, which we won, so we've won our first piece of silverware this season. We then simulated the game against Bournemouth in the Premier League, which we luckily enough won. And then we faced off against Benfica in the second leg, and we beat them 2-0, which over the two legs, we beat them 4-1. So the last episode, I felt absolutely unbelievable. We finally turned it round. We've been struggling with simple draws and not keeping clean sheets and not getting the wins that we deserve. And that last episode really turned this whole series round for me. It really gave me a lot of energy, a lot of passion. And I think realistically, because we've been on such a low and we've been a little bit of a mediocre team, we've been not hitting the heights that we should, that episode really put a spring back in my step. And that is why I'm excited to play these three Premier League games today. Up first, we have the Liverpool derby away from home against Everton. We then face off against Watford, also away from home in the Premier League. And then Crystal Palace come to Anfield, where we face off against them, also in the Premier League. So nine points up for grabs in today's episode. I'm hoping we're going to get all nine because we are in a situation right now where we can't afford to be dropping points in the Premier League. You can see Arsenal are currently top after playing 29 games with 62 points. Spurs, with a game in hand, have only played 28 on 61 points, so only one point behind Arsenal, still with a game to play. We are then down in third position, joint with Manchester United and Chelsea on 57 points. If we win our game, we go up to 60, but there's only two points behind the current leaders, Arsenal, on 62. But as we talk about Spurs, who are really in the driving seat in this career mode at the moment, just 30 minutes ago, in real life, Pochettino has just been sacked by Tottenham Hotspur. I have to say, it didn't come as a surprise. I kind of thought it was going to come eventually... His road at Spurs after five years was going to come to an end because I feel like he has lost the dressing room. I didn't think that Spurs were playing as well as they should be. And I think because the Spurs players have been playing so poorly and not getting the wins and getting the important points that they need, Pochettino has now been sacked. Now, Jose Mourinho is in the top pole position to come in as Spurs manager. I think it may be Ancelotti. But let me know who you guys think might be the next Spurs' manager. But, moving over to the comments on the last episode, we've only got a couple so we can whiz through these. Comment coming in from Zing saying you should get Timo Werner because he's been linked to the club. Now, Timo Werner is a very funny one because for the last three years, Timo Werner gets linked every single transfer window. And for me, would I like him at Liverpool? 100%. Do I think he's ever going to come to Liverpool? I'm 80% sure it's going to be a no for the simple reason as Klopp is not going to put Timo Werner into our starting eleven. He's not going to come in and take over for Bobby Firmino. So do I think Timo Werner, who plays as the top striker right now at RB Leipzig, is he going to maybe get paid a little bit more but come and warm the bench at Liverpool and maybe play like the Carabao Cup games, the FA Cup games, maybe now and again in the Premier League if Bobby comes off. And, but then we've also got Divock Origi to come on. It's a little bit iffy. But what I did say to Zing, and it's a great, great transfer, don't get me wrong. The issue with this is I promised myself, at least for this first season, I would play with players that don't normally get played in my career mode. So on FIFA 19, you would have never seen Pedro Chiravella in the team. Divock Origi, we sold him to Wolves. Ryan Kemp, we sold him. Harry Wilson, we sold him. And I really want to stick with my word of playing with players that I don't usually get to use. And to be honest, I've actually found it really, really enjoyable because the likes of Divock Origi is a great striker to play with and I'm really, really enjoying it. You've also got Ryan Kent out on the left wing. Oh, what a player. He is like a diamond in the rough. He's so quick and he comes in and he does a good job, just like the top man Sadio Mane. So I'm very happy that I have introduced the youngsters into the starting eleven this year. Peter Kearney says, after a tough, tough few months, it feels great to be back. Now, with this comment, I don't know if Peter has had a tough, tough few months and he's just come back to the channel to start watching the content again, or he means after a few tough months of us drawing, losing games, not getting the wins, we bounced back because that last episode was incredible. We got some great goals, 
But most importantly, we got all the results we fully deserved. And then finally, comment from Avi saying the Premier League title is going to be yours, dude. Well, it's going to be tight. That is for sure, Avi. If you do look at the current Premier League standings, it's tight. And we are behind right now with only 10 games to go in our first season at Liverpool. Can you believe it, guys? 10 more games and the Premier League is done. Season one at Liverpool, done. What, what an absolute madness. But what I also want to tell you guys as well, is if you have not checked out the YouTube community page, you need to, because earlier today, I put out a straw poll on the community page saying, what video would you rather see tomorrow? I'm recording at 5 p.m., so whichever is winning by that time, that's what's going to be recorded. 13 votes from you guys, 38% wanted the Dortmund career mode, 62% wanted the Liverpool cream mode. So on the 20th of November, Wednesday the 20th of November, you guys will be seeing this video right now, which is of course the Liverpool cream mode. And on Friday the 22nd, you'll see Dortmund. The way I'm going to go forwards now, guys, is this week that you've just watched me upload is going to be week A, which means Monday and Wednesday is going to be the Liverpool career mode. And on Friday, it's going to be the Dortmund career mode. Then on week B, so next week, it's going to be Monday and Wednesday is going to be Dortmund. And on Friday, it's going to be the Liverpool cream. And I'm going to rotate like that so we keep it nice and equal. So you'll have two one week from Liverpool and one from Dortmund. And then the following week, you'll have two from Dortmund and one from Liverpool. Meaning every two weeks, you'll have three videos from each series. Hopefully you guys understand that. If you don't, drop a comment down below and I will certainly explain it a little bit better. But to kick off today's episode... We are away in the Liverpool derby to face off against Everton. We've had to rotate the team a lot. Because of that final game against Benfica, we only played it on the Wednesday. We're now playing the Everton game on the Friday. We've had one day rest, and it certainly wasn't enough. But what we'll do is we'll jump in to the press conference, see what the media have to say, and then show you the lineup we're putting out against Everton. And hopefully the lineup's good enough, because it is a B slash C team, but I'm confident it's good enough to take on Everton's A team. Here we go. Thank you all for joining us. We'll thank you, thank you. Kick off the questions. With the curtain about to fall in this Premier League season, it looks like your team lost ground on the title. Do you still believe you can win it? Well, well, Avi thinks we can. We'll fight till the end. My players need to wake up. We have to stay for. We'll fight till the end. Till the very last point. Till the very last whistle on the final day of the Premier League. We will fight. You won your previous account with Everton by quite a margin. What do you expect will happen today? Difficult one because we're playing a B slash C team. We'll look forward to another win. We're good enough to earn a clear win. I prefer to show a force. Um, we look forward to another win. That's what we want. We want the three points. We need the three points more than fact. Next question. Everton is at the bottom of the league leading up to your match. Are you confident you'll be able to keep compliancy out of your squad? Yep. Uh, these matches are never easy, I'll say. And they're not, because we are having to play a very rotated team. It's not the usual starting eleven with the lowest rating being an 84 in Gino and Aldum. We've really okay, rotated guys, the we'll team, and when you guys see it in just a moment's time as we get into this game against Everton, you'll also sit there and think, Brad, is this team good enough to beat Everton? And I personally think it is in real life. I personally also think it is. Now, we are away from home, so we're going to go... In our, ooh, do we go in our black kit or our white kit? Let's go in our white kit. They can go in their home blue kit. And you can see from the lineup, the lowest rating that's currently in the team is Ryan Kent at 74. But Ryan Kent is certainly not a weak player. He's been absolutely tremendous in this first season at Liverpool. And I look forward to seeing what he grows into for the rest of the season and also throughout season two. But the lineup we are going out with, we've got Ryan Kent out on the left wing, Divock Origi at striker, Shakiri out on the right wing, Nabikita linking up with James Milner in the central midfield, a little deeper in the central defensive midfield, we've got Marco Grujic, and then Max Lovren, Gomez and Hoover at the back, with Adrian between the sticks. We've travelled two minutes down the road to Goodison Park, hopefully in 90 minutes time we can travel two minutes back up the road to Anfield, with the three points in the bag. I am a little bit gutted about having to put out such a rotated team. Tio Wolcott. He doesn't do anything for Everton since he's uh, moved from Arsenal. There he is. Our penalty taker. Our solid midfielder. Solid defender. Goalkeeper striker. James Milley. He can play anywhere on the pitch. The man is a beast. It's raining in Liverpool on this Friday evening. I'm excited for this game. 
I like a good Liverpool derby. I like it more when we absolutely dominate them. Most importantly, get a clean sheet and potentially all three points. But Everton are going to be the team to kick us off in this first half period. Let's get it on the way. Let's do over at Everton. Playing a little bit of pressure here now. Here's Delph. Hoover's on it. Let's play it out now to Shakiri. And Shakiri has pulled Fabian Delph well out of position by dropping back. And here comes Jordan Shakiri. We should really be able to do something from this. Go to Navi Keita. Back of the net. Navi Keita scores. Well, it was only a matter of time before we put a goal past the Toffees. And it's that man there. Nabi and Nabi Keita. Beautiful goal as well. He couldn't really have put any more power on it if he tried it. Rocket off the bar. Above Lossel. And rocket into the back of the net. Any more power and that could have easily went over the bar. But it's a great shot from Nabi Keita. And it does end up in the back of the net. We beat, or currently lead, should I say, Everton 1-0. I'm hoping we can also beat them. Nabi Keita now looking to push them forward. There goes Nabi Keita. Go on, Ryan Kent. Go on, son. Nice little dink in there. But Divock Origi coming into the middle of the arch. Put a nice little ball in looking for Divock. Shadan Shakiri's there with an absolute rocket. Unbelievable. I know the goal was empty. But usually I tend to smash them over a the bar. We don't. It's a great ball in. Lossel punches it. It's an empty goal. And look at that. Jadon with an empty goal decides to still take the risk. By putting it between Rekic and Fabian Delph. He could have placed it through the middle. But no. Zidane Shaqiri had another idea of smashing it. Between the left back and the left centre back. He scores his first Premier League goal. And it's against the Blues. Nearly. Come on Divock. Fight for it lads. Fight for it. Milner's on that one. Nicely done Ryan Kent. Laying it off now to Divock Origi. Divock Origi! 3-0! This is going to be a cricket score. And this is what you and me at home. You and me at home. Me and you at home. Have missed from this Liverpool career mode. Energy. Passion. Wins. Goals. And we've absolutely dominated against Everton here. Divock Origi. Benz are in the bottom left corner past Lossel. And we lead after 39 minutes. 3-0. And as Everton now pass this round in the middle of the pitch, pretty sure the referee is going to blow his half-time whistle. He does right there. There was nothing coming from that attack from Everton. And what an absolutely re incredible result by half-time. Absolutely unbelievable. Slow day at the office. Something else. That, that was not a slow day at the office. Everton players haven't even turned up. Four shots, two on target. Somehow we've managed to bury three in the back of the net. Only two shots on target. Three shots for Everton, one on target. I'm shocked that they've had more of the ball. It certainly doesn't feel like that. And we are absolutely dominating. It's 3-0. It could be 6 or 7-0 by full time. And especially if these centre-backs start getting more fatigued and tired. We're only going to exploit that with Jadon Shakiri and Ryan Kemp. But as Divock Origi kicks us off in his second half, let's get it on the way. Let's look for Dejan Lovren in this space here. Run Dejan in. No, it's going to go to Divock Origi. This is why I can't sign Timo Werner. This is why. How can I bring anyone in to get ahead of Divock Origi? How? He's outscoring Bobby Firmino right now. Right foot, left foot, head that it doesn't matter. Divock Origi, if I was Liverpool manager in real life, get this man a statue outside Anfield. He deserves it for what he's done for us in the Champions League. Scoring that goal against Everton in like the 92nd minute. His sixth goal in the Premier League. Divock, take a bow, son. You are a beast. To a Wobie. They're playing the ball around nicely now. Here comes Sigerson. He's done you there. Come on, let's get in there, lads. Get in there. Oh, it's off the crossbar. Get rid of that Lovren. Not come back into play. And luckily enough for us, it didn't. Here's a Wobie edge of the box for Sigerson. Oh, I'm going to say that's only a consolation goal. I would not say... This is Everton coming back in. And to be honest, we're at Goodison Park, Everton's home ground. And that goal there from Sigerson, the place is quiet. The theatre of silence is all I'm saying. There's Balassi on the inside now. Going to have to maybe pull Lovren across here. Lovren going to get in there. No, it's a great ball into Sigerson. It's 4-2. 
I hope I haven't spoken too soon here. I hope I haven't spoken too soon. I mean, what's your Gomez is doing here? Why isn't Gomez tight to Sigerson? It's 4 2. Surely it's not game on here with 15 minutes to go. Enric lays off to Gomez. Let's get a foot in here now. He's done very well there. He's done very well. Through to Enric. It's 4 3. I didn't see this coming. Seven goals at Goodison Park in the Liverpool derby. Well, we've got up the other end of the pitch now. We've got a corner to finish off this game against Everton. Let's see if we can get Marco Grujic on it. Ball in. Grujic is going to be there. Grujic is there. Following up with Lovren, unfortunately, into the hands of Lossel. As soon as he kicks this ball, the referee's got to blow his full-time whistle. Ball's kicked out. We win the header. Just get rid of an ox. There we go. Wow, we had to dig deep for that one in the end, didn't we, ladies and gentlemen? 4 0 up, and it was not over by any means. 4 3. Fair play to Everton. 4 0 down, normally the heads drop and the players give up, but that was not the case with this Everton side. They kept coming at us. And put up a real good fight. It was Gilfy Sigerson that really brought them back into this game. Wow, we both nearly had the same amount of shots. We only had one more shot. We both had the same amount of shots on target. They had more of the ball. Absolutely unbelievable. Of course, our big man, the legend, that Divock Origi, picks up one of the match with a 9.5 rating. I'd be excited to see the questions from the media in this post-match interview. Because if a question comes up after 4-0 up, did you think the game was buried and done? Well, yes, I did. 4-3. I mean, first of all, at least we get the win. That's that, that's an important part of this. Why didn't we get to see Roberto Firmino play? He just played one day ago. What, why do you think competition is good? Team comes first. Why ask me this? Uh, yeah, competition is good. I mean, realistically, I'd probably just say he wasn't fit. If he was fit, I would have played him against Everton. I mean, it's the Liverpool derby. Liverpool is unbeaten so far in the Premier League. Are you confident to keep the streak rolling? Liverpool's unbeaten so far in the Premier League. I'm pretty sure we've been beating the Premier League. What are they on about? We have what it takes. We're not obsessed with this. We're unbeaten for a reason. We're not obsessed with this because I don't think for one minute that's true. We've definitely lost games. Are you telling me we've just drawn a load? We haven't actually lost the game. I thought we had. With two goals to secure the win, Origi was the hero today. Any thoughts? Yep. Yeah, give this man a statue outside Anfield. An overall great performance. We can't rely on individual. An impressive performance from Divock Origi. I agree. Thank you for your time. Not a problem. Now we have to decide. Obviously, I'm not 100% sure right now whether we're going to play the Watford game. Or let me just check who the other game was. So we got Watford and Crystal Palace. I think Crystal Palace was the home game. And I think Crystal Palace were further down the league, weren't they? Yeah, Crystal Palace in 18th position. So I'm happy to simulate the last game in today's episode. First of all, they're in the relegation zone. Second of all, it's a home game. Whereas the game against Watford, it's away from home. And Watford are higher up the league. So what I'll do as usual now, guys, advance all the way to the Watford game. Get the lineup raring to go. And then we'll take on Watford. This is where we now have to stay. Very calm and very collected. Spurs have played their 29th game. They played against Manchester United, in which they drew 2-2. So Manchester United got one point, and Spurs got one point. Now putting us behind the current league leaders, joint league leaders, I may say, in Spurs and Arsenal. We are currently sat second on our own on 60 points. We then have United technically in third. And then fourth, we have Chelsea and Manchester City joint on 57 points. We have to relax and we have to take this easy because if Spurs or Arsenal are to drop any points in these next two games in today's episode and we win both of them, we will regain the lead. Avi, you could be right here. We may go on to win the league. But we have to do a job over Watford. And most importantly, that simulated game against Crystal Palace is a must win. We cannot afford to drop points against Crystal Palace. We have got a difficult opponent up next in Watford. And again, we cannot afford to drop points. 
This is going to be massive. This is huge, especially now Spurs have opened up a bit of a gap for us to squeeze through if we do the right things. You can see the starting line up there. We're back to the usual starting 11, and I'm hoping we are absolutely going to dominate this Watford side. We're going with Sadio Mane out on the left wing, Bobby Firmino striker Salah out on the right wing. Gino is now linking up with the captain Jordan Henderson in the central midfield. A little deep out we've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield, and then Robertson and Van Dijk, Matip and Trent at the back with Allison between the sticks. Let's get into this game. Let's stay calm. Let's keep playing well. We don't really want a repeat of the Everton game. Yes, we want the win, but we don't want to go 3 or 4 nil up. And then late on into the second half, start conceding stupid, silly goals. Let's stay focused. Let's get the win. Let's score goals. Let's do our best to keep a clean sheet. This is the turning point in our season so far. This is where my managerial skills really have to pay off. We have to make sure we get the win over Watford. And we have to keep our fingers crossed that the AA gods are going to be nice to us in today's episode. They were in the last one when we beat Bournemouth for the simulated game. We need to be Crystal Palace. It is pointless if we get the win here and then draw or lose to Crystal Palace. It's not good enough. We have to, have to get nine points from today's episode. We currently have secured three. Can we make it six by beating Watford as they do get us kicked off in this first half period? Win it, Bobby. Good lad. Go back now, there we go, beautiful from Jordan Henderson to Mo Salah, surely, there we go, 1-0. We are having no problems scoring goals now. Great interception from Jordan Henderson, lays the ball off with just enough pace, look at this. Enough pace, enough roll, through to Mo Salah on his left foot and buries it in that bottom left corner. They are the goals that we see over and over again from the Egyptian king. Just coming into the box on his left foot, tucked away in the bottom left corner to Trent if he wants to go. Henderson's wants to go. Trent's going to go all the way here. And may see Genie towards the back post here. Great ball in. Genie! Oh, that was a cracker. Bang! For, took a first time. That could have been one of Genie's best goals this season. But he spews it wide the goal. Where are my options here? Let's try and play the referee. That's got to be a penalty. It is. Saw takes out Mo Salah in the box. It's a yellow card as well. And we've got a penalty. Now, I was left to comment a couple of episodes ago about penalties. Keep it in the middle. And right before you hit the ball, move it. So that is what we're going to look to do. Do we want Sadio Mane on this? Do we? Manny is top goal scorer, so let's let him take it. So, we keep it in the middle. We shoot. And then last minute, we move it. It didn't move. It doesn't move. You've got to do it before he even takes a step. We're going to have to keep Trent on him. I'm not going to afford to bring a defender, a centre-back out of position. Saw coming forwards. Oh, no, it's great from Saw. Well done, Trent. After all that, Trent gets the... Saar is quick, you know. Trent struggling to keep up with him. Now going to cut it back. That's what we want. Let's keep them on the edge of the box. Capuya receives the ball. But the referee is going to say the first half is already done. And he does blow his half-time whistle. We're going in with a 1-0 lead. We should be 2-0. We took a penalty. A shot in the middle. I went to move it as we kicked the ball. And it wouldn't move. So whoever told me that, thank you very much. It didn't move. Would have scored if I'd have went left like a 1-2. But... Regardless, we tried something new. It didn't pay off. But the important thing is we do still have the 1-0 lead. And we do currently have a clean sheet as we get the second half kicked off with Bobby Firmino. Let's get it on the way. There's Ashley Barnes. We've got to be careful here. Ball in behind my tips on it. Play it out from the back. Good lad. In the inside now. Let's go, Bobby. Let's go, Bobby. There we go. Bobby's going here now. Bobby's going. Surely this time. Bobby Firmino. Bobby Firmino. The Brazilian man has a chance to bury it. And he doesn't. Bobby going to put one over the top there to Mane. What a ball to Sadio Mane who takes it on the volley. It's a great save from Gomez. Come on, Robbo. Get over, son. Get over. Get over. Uh oh, ball into the middle. That's a great ball in behind. It's offside. And it's lucky that it's offside, really. I pulled Van Dijk forwards and luckily enough, I did at just the right time, otherwise that 
is 1-1. One, one. I want to make sure I keep Seth Van Berg nice and deep. I don't want him coming forwards. Ball over the top and there we go. That's where they're going to attack. Come on, Seth. Come on, son. Ball in towards the middle. Let's get rid of that Robbo. And then late on into the second half, start conceding stupid, silly goals. Robbo, that's the wrong end. That's the wrong end. That's an unbelievable goal, but at the wrong end. Oh, my word. In the 86th minute, it's 1-1. One, one. Have we just threw this away? Stopped them coming forward. Let's go again, lads. Let's go again. Play it through. Not we've given it away. It's over. It's over. It's over, I think. Ball down this far side. It's done. Let's just hope that we can get a point out of it. I can't believe this. An own goal from Robertson. Wow! I actually can't believe that. It's, it's actually frustrating me that. You always have a suspicion Mo Salah will get high marks, and that applies to this contest, Lee Dixon. How does Andy Robbo go and head that in the back of the net? I mean, look at the stats. We absolutely killed them. Ten shots, five on target. They had four shots, two on target. Mo Salah picks up man of the match with an 8.8 .8 rating. Robbo, why? Why, why, why did you have to go and do that to me? Why? Oh. Hurry up because I'm frustrated. We had a chance there to capitalise. Liverpool is unbeaten. So you keep asking this. I'm pretty sure we're not unbeaten. We're not obsessed with this. I'm not obsessed because it's not true. I'm going to go and check that in a minute. I'm sure we've been beaten. Once you got the equaliser in the first half, did you expect... Once you got the equaliser in the first half. Once we got the equaliser. E8, we were 1 0 up. Are you stupid? Honestly, E8, fix this, please. That was poor. Once we got the equaliser, we were 1 0 up. I don't know what you mean. For your last two encounters with Watford, you could not score a decisive goal. Is your offence having difficult? No, we would have won one nil. No, I have no doubts. The situation here was we scored no goal. That's it. Thanks very much. I hope the lads' heads haven't dropped for this last game against Crystal Palace. Just when I thought we had a turning point in our career at Liverpool for our first season. And it falls flat like that when we draw 1-1 with Watford. But to top it off, it's Andy Robertson that scores the goal for Watford. Why, Andy? Why? If we'd have just got the 1-0 win, we would have been in a great position. In fact, if we'd got the 1-0 win, we'd now be top of the Premier League. Because we'd have got an extra two points, putting us on 63. Putting us one point ahead of joint second, they would have been Spurs and Arsenal. Now we have to hope the Spurs and Arsenal, at least one of them, slips up and draws or loses. So we still have a chance of clawing back because they both win and they're going to go to 65. Put us four points behind me and they've got to drop two games, lose two games. And we'd have to get a win and a draw to joint with them or two wins to be two points ahead. Absolutely gutted. I'll be gutted now if we don't get this result against Crystal Palace as well because we deserve to win over Watford. And in the games like this, when we simulate them, it's in the hands of the EA gods. And I really don't want them to screw us. But this is the lineup we are putting out. Unfortunately, Virgil van Dijk and Alisson are not fully fit. But I have to play them because I cannot afford to lose or draw this game. But we've gone with Neres out on the left wing for his first starting debut for Liverpool since coming in from Ajax. Divock Origi up top in the striker position. Shakiri out on the right wing. Bruno Fernandes linking up with Naby Keith in the central midfield. A little deeper, we've got Marco Grujic in the central defensive midfield. And then Max van Dijk Gomez and Klein at the back with Alisson between the sticks. Please, EA, don't do me like this. Play is warming up. Oh, my word. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's not like it was too bad as well because I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. Oniswo? 
Onisiwo, Onisiwo, I think, scored in the 84th. So we were 2 0 up by the 83rd minute. And then unfortunately, they did get a goal. But Shakiri scores in the fifth minute. Thank you, Shakiri. And then the man that should have a statue outside Anfield, Divock Origi, scores late on in the 82nd to take it to 2 0. And then unfortunately, we do suffer a goal from Onisiwo in the 84th minute from Crystal Palace. But the important thing to come out of that game is we got the victory and we beat them 2-1. I glimpsed down in the bottom right to see if there was any results for Spurs or Arsenal, and unfortunately, there's not. So what we'll do now, guys, I'll head back to the central. I'll advance all the way to the next game, ready for the next episode, and hopefully keep our fingers crossed. Arsenal and Spurs have dropped some points. Spurs took their chances. Arsenal, not so much. Spurs now four points clear of joint second Liverpool, Manchester United, and Arsenal. Spurs won their 30th and also their 31st. Now putting them four points clear with only seven Premier League games to go. And our next Premier League game is against Pep Guardiola and co. Manchester City are down in sixth position. Well, no one said it was going to be easy when I, as the manager, you guys as the assistant managers, took on Liverpool. It's a struggle, it's a challenge, and we're certainly putting up a fight. Let's take a look at the games, wow, in the next episode. Manchester City away from home in the Premier League. PSG are our quarter-finalists in the Champions League. And then Aston Villa travel to Anfield to take us on in the Premier League. Well, it's obvious what we're doing, isn't it? We're playing City, we're playing PSG, and we're simulating the game against Villa. We would then have another three games to finish off April. We'll then move into May, and then we're done. We don't have easy games. Manchester City in the Premier League, Arsenal in the Premier League, Chelsea in the Premier League. We have three very, very difficult games in the Premier League where we must, must get three points every time we take on. Realistically, for us to win the Premier League now, we will have to get the three points against City, get the three points against Aston Villa, get the three points against Brighton, against Burnley, against Arsenal, against Chelsea, and against Newcastle. If we have any hope, of catching Spurs and finishing Premier League champions. That is the only, only way. I'm going to take a look now at the games that Spurs have. So Spurs' next game is... They just battered Sheffield United 5-1. Spurs' next game is Bournemouth, which could be a difficult opponent. They then have West Ham. They'll get the win there. They play Newcastle. They'll get the win there. Leicester could be a challenge for them. Arsenal. They play Arsenal on the 13th of May. And then who is their last game of the season? Crystal Palace. Probably rather have Spurs' fixtures, if I'm completely honest. Now, that's another thing we just looked at. 19 wins, 7 draws, 5 losses, 5 Ls. So, media... Why do you keep gathering and saying Liverpool are unbeaten in the Premier League? We've been beaten five times. A very, very difficult episode in the next one. Very, very difficult. We currently finish second joint with Manchester United and Arsenal. Only three points behind the Chelsea. We have to play Chelsea and Arsenal. We also have to play Manchester City. Let me know down below, guys. Do you think we can catch Spurs? We would need them to lose two of their last seven. For me, it's probably going to be Arsenal that will maybe hold them to a draw or beat them. Leicester or Bournemouth, they are the ones that I think they're going to do over. The likes of West Ham and Brighton, I'm pretty sure they're going to do over them. It'll be like a walk in the park. But right now, Spurs are not giving up a fight and neither are we. But that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. If you have enjoyed it... Please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.